אנשים באים? First of all, again, uh, just like Ariel said, thank you very much for the invitation, and uh, it's great to be here. It's also good to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit more topless uh, about what I do when I build up the team. Uh, you'll see that in the beginning, we're going to talk, I had planned to talk a little bit more kind of background, uh, but Ariel dug into that. Uh, what I think about when I thought about doing the presentation, I really thought it was almost like baking a cake. And there's many different recipes that go into making, uh, many different ingredients that go into making the cake. And we'll go through them. One thing uh, I just want to add on to, to what Ariel was saying, I think it's very important the contact that the CEO or the president has with VP Sales. Uh, I know that a lot of things that I've been able to move forward within the company very fast have uh, really only been because I have good support uh, and good feedback. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of first of all just go into a little bit of background about making the structure to a strong team, uh, what things to look for. Afterwards, more of again the talk list like I was saying, the recruitment, the training, also the commission structure. Uh, and then afterwards just some ground rules, uh, areas to stay away from, and also risk factors. Okay? Great. Okay. Uh, I'm a devout fan of inside sales. I love inside sales. I believe in it. Uh, I don't know if anybody here just came back from the Internet Retailer Show in uh, San Diego, which was last week. That's the show of the year for basically online sales. What I was able to, to find there, again, was even more proof. Talking to owners of companies, whether it's B2B or B2C, uh, companies today are looking towards inside sales. They want to build their inside sales team. Uh, there's a lot of insecurity about people buying on the internet still, and the inside sales team is, is able to build a stronger sale and a larger profit. Uh, just something here that I picked up is that once you charge more than $100, an inside sales team becomes an effective tool. Okay, so when we're talking about numbers before, again, within Campile, our pricing goes for SMB $99 to $600. Uh, but uh, we still have our inside sales team may start with a hundred dollar sale and just uh, to understand why today when you get a lead it's very unclear who this person is right there's consultants that are out there people are using Gmail and Yahoo addresses people don't like to reveal the name of their company sometimes people will give their cell phone because they don't want you calling the head company and getting through to them and the main reason why is because I think most consumers B2B today, they realize that they have to be a little bit more frugal. They don't have the extra money to spend. So that way, what they're doing is they're trying to also qualify me just as much as I'm trying to qualify them. So the inside sales team, they really become a fact-finding team to understand who the person is and really how much we look at it as how much we can get out of them uh, when we see. Uh, okay, just this last point down here, another thing that uh, I learned also from this weekend Inside sales is growing worldwide. Uh, definitely we can feel it in Israel. I think uh, everyone that's here is obviously here to learn about inside sales. Competition for inside sales representatives in Israel is extremely tight and extremely hard. Uh, and we also know that uh, it's a growing field, so it's, it is successful. Okay. Um, let's talk about when I, when I want to build a team. Uh, Basically, we go back to the beginning and we start discuss what kind of team we want to build. 
we talk about creating goals after understanding the market a little bit, after understanding what the competitors and what a similar market is charging, we understand and we start to look at, okay, so what are our goals? When we look at the goals, we definitely look at a two-year plan. Uh, we start with looking at the first year as being a very actual plan based on quarterly goals. I look at it more on monthly goals. Uh, when I'm dealing with REL, with the CEO, I'm looking at it on more of a quarterly basis. Everything we do, uh, we SWAT it, so we're looking for threats, we're looking for opportunities uh, that are in the marketplace that are going to come up and things that I was not aware of when I set up my original plan. It's important to know also is that your original plan, obviously, it's going to shift. Uh, you might find that you all of a sudden come out with a product that springs things forward, whereas if on the opposite side, you might have direction that slows things down a little bit. So when we forecast, we're forecasting uh, two sides. We're obviously, we're forecasting for revenue growth. Uh, we want to know how much we're going to be looking at again on a quarterly or a yearly basis. Uh, something that's important for me in building the team is I obviously want to know about team growth. Okay, I want to know about, again, Ariel talked about the funnel, how many leads are going to be coming in, how many of those leads are going to be qualified, and then how many salespeople I'm going to need to deal with the qualified leads and convert them into a sale, which is the ultimate goal. Uh, I believe very much in building a long-term relationship uh, with the team, and uh, I think everybody probably has heard this, people don't leave companies, they leave managers. Okay, so, you know, obviously if you're looking for a quick inside salesperson that's going to have the experience that you want, that's going to be able to deliver results, and you're not going to press that back to them. You're not going to share with what's happening, whether it just be financial or also the actual clita of the company. Uh, you're looking for a short-term, short-term relationship. Uh, and the other thing is uh, also Ariel mentioned, but attrition cancellations is a major, major, major factor for any SaaS company. Uh, and you really have to take this into account when you're talking about how to build your team. Okay, building a sales team is not just about bringing in money, it's also about holding the money inside. Okay, those farmers and those account managers are extremely important uh, for your company. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the, the funnel here. Okay. Um, also, again, you know, the numbers that we have here is it's symbolic, okay? Every company is going to have their own numbers and their own agenda, uh, obviously, and their own, uh, their own products that they're selling. The relationship with, with marketing for sales is extremely important. Again, if, if I don't have a good con contact with marketing, if I don't know what the marketing campaign is going to be, if I don't know that marketing is planning to go to a certain convention, bring out a product to meet a certain market, uh, I'm going to have a tough time selling. In the same respect, marketing needs to know from me all the time what's working. So this is just when we talk about marketing and we talk about, again, building our team and how many salespeople we're going to need, this is the kind of funnel that I work with. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, so I know that we're looking at reaching a bottom line level of X dollars that we want to get. And then I start to work it up, and then up and down I do it. But if we talk from the bottom up, so I know that I want to have in the end 360 sales, again, for example, and I know it's times X dollars. I know out of that, my team should be able to cover 1,200 leads. And what does that mean, cover? That means talking to them, running a demo, uh, doing a phone call. That means filtering out a level and then the original level that we had from inside for marketing. So again, to take it from the top, marketing is bringing in 3,000 leads. Okay, out of that, the automated system, which we're going to look at, the automated system already recognizes that there's 2,100. About 70% of those 3,000 leads are suitable for sales. Okay? After that, this is where my team gets very involved. We're going through and really just hacking through it, and I really think about it like a, in a jungle with a machete. Right? It's mostly grapevines or tree vines. It's mostly vines. They're not going to turn into sales. But two things are very important. One is that I really don't always know who the end client is, like I was saying. And two, don't forget that many people that cannot buy today or decide not to buy today, they might come back tomorrow. They got in this original group for a reason, and that's because they saw value in your product. Okay? So make sure that you're going to treat them with respect. Do some kind of follow-up, whether it's email follow-up or phone follow-up, but make sure that these people that are making it down this level 
are definitely you're checking into them you're qualifying them and you're also keeping them as opportunity for the future after that after a series of demos uh, and phone calls and follow up which for s and generally takes about one month okay two weeks to one month uh, after that then we have the end goal which is the number of sales that we Uh, okay, I talked before about marketing, uh, and marketing works very closely with myself. I know that I have a weekly meeting with marketing. Uh, again, I need to pass on to marketing what's working, what's not working, and I also really need to hear from them what kind of blogs are coming out this week, what are their plans, what's their forecast, what are their targets. In the same way, when I'm building my team, once we get these leads at the top of the funnel, unless I have a good system built, there's no way that I'm going to be able to manage it. You know, using Excel is not, uh, I mean, it's just not, like, it's not even for this forum. We're talking about business. We're talking about 3,000 leads a month. I mean, Excel is, it's not possible. You need a strong program that's going to be able to work with it, with these leads. And you also need to work very closely with R&D. Okay? So I know that I have my head of R&D. Uh, again, what I mentioned before as far as having strong connections with REL, I know that I have REL's backing also when I'm dealing with R&D. With if leads are coming in and I don't have a system that's automatically recognizing what are the strong leads from the weak leads, all right, I need to go to R&D and make sure that's solved. If I want to change those criteria and tighten up my system, I need to make sure that I have somebody to work with. And the biggest thing is, is anything slipping through the cracks? Because the worst email or phone call that you want to get is from a client that says, I've been trying to get a hold of somebody in sales and nobody's returning my call. And I, we still get those, but those are the worst things. When that happens internally, we open up the system, we find out exactly how this person slipped through the cracks, whether it's a human error or whether it was a mechanical error. Uh, the reporting is going to be extremely important. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is we have a lot of our automatic processes are built in within our, our system. What we use, uh, Ariel mentioned, is we use uh, Salesforce uh, as a CRM internally. When we talk about hardware, there's three major things that a salesperson needs, okay? So if I have a salesperson that's going abroad to work for two weeks uh, from their home, uh, if, uh, if we talked about live person, I remember a long time ago with live person, there was the Iraq war, and uh, they were going to shut down the whole office. And there was an issue that they were going to shut down the internet that it was reaching to the center of the country. So we found out that there was internet was going to be available in a lot. Okay, because it's uh, more of an international. We sent two people down to a lot to cover and make sure. And what do they need? They need three things, right? They have to have a computer, all right? They have to have a phone, computer with internet, and they have to have a CRM. Again, I have to have some way to organize these leads. So these are the three essentials that when you're looking to hire a team, three essentials that, uh, that everyone must have. Uh, and then if you can't measure it, it ain't real, okay? It goes back again to the CRM. We use a Salesforce CRM in-house. Uh, it's a cloud solution. I can access it from anywhere. The R&D team knows in and out how to work with Salesforce. They send me alerts. I can put alerts in Salesforce. And I use the re results of Salesforce, in other words, the reporting. I use that internally with my team. It's not official bottom line bookings results, let's say that Ariel and the board needs, but it definitely gives us an understanding of what's being sold every month, what's being canceled and it helps me organize my leads. I wrote here, uh, don't be cheap about the licenses. This is also, I think, about the CRM. There's ways with these CRM tools, they're a cloud solution. You can take two people and put them on one license under one name, and you can spread these things out. It's just, you're gonna end up, I don't know, what do you say? You'll pay for it in the end. <laughs> they're, they're very expensive. Uh, and there's other 